One billion people worldwide use elevators every day. And if you work in an office building, you know some of the most frustrating moments of your day can revolve around waiting for the elevator. Now elevators are being built to travel at high speeds and report problems in real time. Patrick Bass is CEO of ThyssenKrupp of North America and joins us now to discuss the latest developments. Patrick, welcome. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much, Tanya. Tell us how your company is rethinking elevators from speed and efficiency, even entertainment, perhaps? No, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the mode of transportation available today, we have to continue to push the envelope to improve. If we look at the study that was announced, so if you look at New York City, for instance, across the office population, there was 16.6 years wasted in a year across waiting for elevator equipment, waiting for modes of transportation. Certainly we time that could that. be much better spent, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> so there's opportunities there, whether it be faster cars, lighter cars, uh, more efficient cars from energy usage, all those things, but also What's the uptime? What's the capability of the system to really transport people? And there, to really push that envelope, we're looking at trying to go into a preemptive and predictive service model. So we can really talk about uptime of equipment rather than monthly maintenance or monthly cleaning and getting in and, and find, trying to find what is the problem. Right. We want to know what the problem is before we ever arrive to the job site. So that's so. an increased use of computers, the yeah, it's, it's connectivity, it's the cloud, it's the right. Internet of Things. So mm -hmm. how can you take Industry 4.0 or Internet of Things and leverage it into a more efficient product, more efficient service capability? So you connect the system, you get real-time data, not just the data of that unit, but data across what's going on in that particular environment, and you can start drawing correlations. You can actually do predictive models so that we know what happens to that system long before it ever breaks down. Well, specific example, you guys installed the, the elevators in the world Trade Center, correct? Absolutely, yes, a very proud job. So the fastest elevators on the Western Hemisphere, is that correct? How Absolutely fast do correct. they go? So they're 10 meters per second, 2,000 feet per minute. Wow. So it's um, equivalent to roughly 20 miles per hour vertically. Hold so on to your hats. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So are, is it true that there will soon be elevators that can also move horizontally? Yes, we're really excited this week. We have the uh, Council for Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat here. And uh, in that, we'll actually be talking about our multi product. And the multi is a elevator system that's no ropes, mm. no suspension means in regards to the traditional methods. And it's an elevator that can not only move vertically, but horizontally or any increment of degree of angle that you choose, that you need within a building to provide a proper transportation solution. Fascinating. Design, it's so. so Jetsons. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Absolutely. we know you it's have the Willy Wonka it, That's right, the Willy Wonka <laughs> elevator. Love it. So we know you have a partnership coming up with Microsoft that you can't give us all the details about, but what can you tell us? Well, as you know, Microsoft has made a big impact in regards to their cloud and enterprise service approach. And so we partnered with them to really do this connectivity, to be able to bring our units, connect them to the cloud, and look at how can we leverage the data to really be more efficient and provide the customer with the best solution and the best customer value. And the customer really is the riding public right. from a safety, from an uptime, from an availability standpoint. Now, is there anything that could happen inside the elevator that could be interesting? I've noticed now little TVs in some elevators. Sure, certainly, infotainment is certainly a significant trend, and it's been that way for mm -hmm. the last years. And I mean, you'll see different projects across New York City to, to capitalize on that. Right. Whether it be streaming, you know, the lunchtime live uh, programs. We or, would welcome it. Absolutely. So. <laughs> right. All right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for. Thanks so much us. for having us.